So welcome back. Hopefully you've had a little bit of time to think about this question. Uh, what would be a basis for the set of all two by two matrices? And as I promised at the end of the last uh, video that I would work it all out. And so it turns out that there's actually four matrices that form the basis for M22. And let me just write out what those matrices are. One, zero, zero, zero. Then we have the matrix zero, one, zero, zero. Then we have the matrix 0, 0, 0, 1. And then our last, oh, that should have been, I put it in the wrong spot. It should have been 1, 0. And then our, we have 0, 0, 0, 1. So we have a 1 in one spot of the matrix, and then the rest of the entries are 0. And we, we do this for uh, all possible places you can put the 1. And this is called the standard basis for M22. So it looks a lot kind of like the standard basis for Rn, where in that case, we also had, we had a one in each, each particular spot that was possible and then zero in everywhere else. And let's just double check why this is a basis. Well, it's linearly independent since if you try, if you take uh, any linear combination say that we're looking at C1 plus the first matrix plus C2 times the second matrix plus C3 times the third plus C4 times the fourth matrix. If you multiply that all out, you would get C1, C2, C3, C4. And what we want to know is when does this thing equal the zero vector? And in this case, it's the zero, zero, it's the zero matrix. And that will happen if and only if C1, C2, C3, C4 equals zero. So only when we have the trivial solution. So only the trivial combination of the uh, matrices will give me the zero matrix. What about a spanning set? Why is it a spanning set? Well, take any matrix that in our set. Let's say I take A, B, C, D, and I want to write it as a linear combination of those matrices. Well, it's A times the first matrix plus B times the second matrix, right? And you can see why that is, because this gives me a matrix with an A in the top left-hand corner and zero everywhere else. This gives me a matrix with a B in the top right corner and zero everywhere else. And then we carry on C times M3 and D times N4. And this is clearly in the span of our four matrices. Okay. And as you can see, uh, there's nothing really special about M22 here. This idea will generalize to all M by N matrices, where in that case, our standard basis would be taking a, a matrix where we have one in exactly one spot and then the rest of the entries are zero. So our standard basis for M times N would have M times M different matrices. Okay. So that gives you another example of a basis. And as I was mentioning last time, that sometimes it's actually helpful to see things that are not, uh, do not have the property. So let me give you an example where we show something is not a basis. So here I have a set of ve uh, vectors. And in this case, because I'm working in P2, my vectors are all polynomials. So my polynomials are one minus three T plus two T, two times T squared, one plus t, uh, t plus four T squared and one minus 17. And I wanna show that this is not a basis. So you have two options available to you. Um, you can either show that it's not linearly independent or you can show that it doesn't span all of P2. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show A. Okay, so we're gonna show A and what we wanna do is show that we can get a non-trivial solution uh, if I'm setting this guy equal to zero, I can get a non-trivial solution. So let me just kind of expand this out first, right? So we have C1 plus C2 plus C3. Those are all the constant terms. And then the coefficient of T is minus uh, 3C1 plus C2 minus 7C3T. And then we take all the coefficients of T squared. So we have 2C1 plus four C two squared. Okay, just double check my notes, make sure I got everything right. Yep, it looks right. And we want this equal to the zero polynomial. So we wanna look for all the C's that allow me to do this. 
If there's only the trivial solution, then it's linearly independent, but we're going to show that it has a non-trivial solution. And we saw in something like this before, right, is that we're actually cooking up a system of linear equations, right, because this is equivalent to the following system of linear equations. We want to solve uh, 1 minus 3, 2, 1, 1, 1 minus 7, 4, 0. Take this matrix and we're looking at C1, C2, C3 equaling to 0, 0, 0. Okay, so we want to be able to solve this. Now, we're we're asking more of an existence question. We don't care if like what the actual solutions are. We just care about whether there is one solution or infinite number of solutions. And kind of the quick way to get at this information, because the three by three matrix, is to compute the determinant. So we compute the determinant. So one, 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 minus three, one, minus seven, two, four, zero. And I'm going to use my three by three trick. So I go down this diagonal. So I get one, one times zero. So I get zero. Then I have one times negative seven plus times two, which gives me minus 14. And then I have one times minus three minus four. So it gives me minus 12. And then I have minus two. And then I have minus uh, 28. And then I have minus zero. And let's see, put all the pieces here together. So over here, it gives me minus 28, and then I'm adding 28, so I have zero. So what I know is that this matrix is not invertible. All right, so let's kind of look what we have here. So we know that the matrix is not invertible because the determinant is zero. But that means that Ax equals zero has a non-trivial solution, which implies that we have a non-trivial solution. So that means that the polynomials are linearly independent. Which then implies that S is not a basis because in order for it to be a basis, all the elements in S needed to be linearly independent. And so, oh, so that's a major mistake there. That should be linearly dependent, okay? Because they're not independent. Okay, so that gives you a good example of showing something is not linearly independent. So we'll take a little break here and then we'll introduce the spanning set theorem.